This is a short video I've made to illustrate how we perform cryoablation for a small renal mass. You can see this patient has got a solitary right kidney and there's a small enhancing renal mass arising from the lower pole. It's very close to the small bowel. Um, this is seen particularly well on the coronal images also. This is the BTG or now Boston Scientific um, cryoablation machine we're going to use called the ICE FX. Uh, it's a particularly neat small desktop machine and it allows you to use up to eight ice needles or probes with four channels. Here we're going to use the ice pearl um, which gives us a quite a small ablation but a very spherical ablation but this will be sufficient for this small renal lesion. First of all we're just going to open the packet, take the ice pearl needle out and lay it onto our sterile field. Then going to prep the skin and we do all this down in the CT scan room, also with ultrasound guidance if we need it. We're now going to test the needle in saline and we're going to cool it with the argon gas and you will see that it will slowly form a small ball of ice onto the end of the needle. Once we've done that we need to position the needle within the patient um, we often do this initially with ultrasound guidance because it's quick, but in this situation and with the patient under general anaesthetic where we can guarantee that we've got good breath holes in expiration, uh, we place the needle with direct CT guidance. So this is using intermittent CT slices, so we first of all place the needle a few centimetres into the skin on the slice position where we've seen the tumour on the post-contrast slice. We then confirm the position with a few small further slices and then advance the needle further and so on until we get the needle into position. As you can see on this short video showing the fluoroscopic steps, needles first of all placed superficially, then going to advance it through the muscle, through the fat, and we've got quite a narrow window to get it in. It's initially a little bit too lateral, we're then going to reposition it a little bit more medially, and then finally we can get it centrally within the small renal mass. Of course, we then have to perform hydrodissection once we're happy that our needle is in position because we do need to make sure that this small bowel is moved well out of the way of the cryotherapy field or it would cause some damage. We're just going to advance the needle there and you can see we've got it right into the middle of the lesion. Now what we can do is we can use the stick mode on the ablation machine which uses a small amount of argon gas and cools the tip of the needle down to about minus 60 or minus 70 degrees and just fixes the needle into place whilst we can then place our hydrodissection needle which is a 22 gauge needle and through this we can just inject some saline to displace the small bowel. There you can see we're using a parallel trajectory we're actually passing through the psoas muscles and we're just lateral to the ureter which you can see on this delayed phase does contain some contrast. Once we've got that needle into that small window and injected a small amount of saline it becomes a lot easier. Now we can press um, the button giving us 100% gas flow which giving us, is going to give us ablation and we're going to perform this for about 10 minutes. You can see the approximate temperature is minus 140 degrees at the needle tip but of course this is just an approximation. That's the needle in place right next to the hydrodissection needle. And you can see partway through the ablation the ice ball is starting to form. This is seen as a low attenuation area within the kidney. There's also a small amount of gas from our hydrodissection. We're then going to allow this to thaw. Uh, we do this passively for about nine minutes and actively for about a minute. This is the active thawing going on at the moment. And once we've thawed this we then perform cryoablation for a second time. We're continually injecting saline in the hydrodissection site. And now we're going to perform active thawing for a further minute. And at the end of that, we're just going to check with a further CT scan. And you can see our needle within the middle of the lesion, hydrodissection needle alongside it, and the fluid around it. And you can see we've got a clear low attenuation ice ball, which more than encompasses the small renal mass. And seeing this ice ball and its diameter, we can be very confident that we've successfully ablated this small renal tumour. 
If you put the pre and post ablation CT scans up side by side, you can clearly see on the right hand image the site of the ice ball, which has encompassed the area of the original tumour, which you can see on the image on the left hand side. This to my mind is one of the big advantages of cryoablation because it gives you the ability to clearly see that you've covered with your ablation technique the area of the tumour. We then follow this patient up with a CT scan at approximately three months, a further one three months later, then six months after that, and then annually for five years.